What's going on, guys? I wanted to talk to you a few minutes about uh, the percentages involved within a box and whisker plot. Now, oftentimes, we've been looking at these box and whisker plots now for quite a while, and we may not have known that they really tell us quite a bit of data. So, what I want you to know and what we know is every time we make a box and whisker plot, we're given all this data of numbers that we find, we put in order. We find the minimum, the maximum, Q1, Q2, Q3, so forth, right? Well, between all of those numbers, from our minimum to our maximum, that is 100% of my data. So that means if I had test scores for my class and I was looking at all my test scores, I'm going to, unfortunately, I'm going to have a lowest test score and I'm going to have the highest test score. Hopefully they're all 100s, but unfortunately we know that's not always accurate. Within my min and max, I know that I have some other numbers that give me really good information. Well, between my minimum and my Q1 is 25% of my data. That means 25% of my students or one fourth of my class will fall between the minimum score and Q1. Another 25% will fall between my median and Q1. And then between my median and Q3, will be another 25%. Well, hold up. This doesn't really look like it's the same width as this one. And that's because our data could be spread out. Our data could be varied. And you'll learn later what's called measures of spread. And our data could very well be spread out a little bit. But that doesn't take away from the fact that 25% of my data will fall between every one of these important uh, numbers. And finally... The final 25% will be between my Q3 and my maximum. And the reason that this is important is because I can start asking questions like, what percentage of my class would score between Q2, the median, and the maximum? Well, what percent would that be? Well, 25 plus 25 would give me 50%. Well, another question I could ask is, what percent of my class did better than the quartile one or the median of the lower half score? Well, if I wanted to know what percentage of my class did better than Q1, I would look at 25% did better than Q1, 25% did better than Q1, and another 25% did better than Q1. Therefore, a grand total of 75% of my class did better than Q1. And so these percentages of a box and whisker plot are always going to be this. It's always going to be 25% between these two. It's always going to be 25% between these two. 25% between Q2 and Q3. And 25% between Q3 and my maximum. And again, all of that adds to give me 100% of my data. So I hope this video helped you understand the percents of the box and whisker plot. Otherwise, be sure to check out my other videos about statistics. And in that case, we'll see you next time.